Hello and welcome to Thimble and Thistle's DIY Mushling Doll Ornament Tutorial. Here is what you'll need to make a magical little friend. At least two colors of wool felt, some ribbon to hang it by, three in one adhesive. I strongly suggest using this adhesive as it'll be most forgiving for this project, a pen to trace your pattern with, something to stuff your doll. I left this tool with a silicone tip, sharp scissors, 10 or 9 millimeter glass bead eyes, Alternatively, you could use hot glue, but it could be difficult to work with. And if you do not have glass bead eyes, you can get creative and use black paint, or maybe paint something else to create eyes like pearls or push pins. For your pattern, you will need a body, an arm, a gill plate with a hole for the stem of the body to go through, and a front and the back of the cap. The front of the cap does need to have an opening for the gill plate to rest inside of. If you will be using my pattern, you will notice that there is a little heart and a number indicated on each piece. The heart represents that this piece will need to be mirrored, which I will demonstrate, and the number is how many of that particular piece you will need. Starting off with the lightest fabric, we'll be doing the body, arm, and gill plate of the doll. Starting with the body, you can see it has a little heart. That means that we will need to mirror it and we will need two, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip that over to create one and two. For the arms, we need four, and again, there's a heart, so one, two, and then I'm going to mirror it for three and four to make both arms. The first time that you are making the pattern, it can be helpful to add a visual reminder by adding a little heart to the corresponding pieces. Now for the gill plate, you can see that there's a two, but there's no heart. For this one, I'm going to go ahead and slide that one up and trace around. It does not need to be mirrored, but I'm not going to include that hole for the stem to go through. For the cap, now we're going to go ahead and trace that onto fabric, and this is how I map that out. Again, for the top of the cap, you can see I only need one, so I'm not going to be replicating that. But for the bottom, I need two. There's no heart, so I'm going to slide that up and trace and then cut out all of those pieces. Be sure to try and trim off any of the residual marks that have been left from tracing your pattern. Now for the gill plate and the front of the cap, you'll notice that there are these sections that need to be cut out. To achieve that, you're gonna go ahead and just fold your pieces in half and then carefully cut along those lines, similar to like making a paper snowflake. And you open it up and have a perfectly matched design. We're gonna go ahead and repeat that with the top of the cap. Lovely. And that should fit right inside. Now that all of our pieces are cut out, we're gonna go ahead and match them up. This makes it easier to keep track of everything we'll move on to adding glue to the perimeter of our body, making sure to leave an opening at the top so that we can stuff it a little bit later on. A little bit of a glue tip, don't hold your bottle directly up and down, hold it at a slight angle, apply a little bit of pressure, and pull at an even pace to create a nice streamline of glue. This also makes it easier to go back in and fill in any gaps that you may miss along the way. Next, we're going to go ahead and create a little body sandwich, put those two pieces together, give some light pats, and then once everything is nice and lined up, we're going to give a nice hard crimping pinch all the way around the perimeter just to make sure that glue is nice and sunk into both sides of the fabric. We're going to repeat this process with the arms, again leaving a hole at the top of the arms so that we can go back and add a little bit of stuffing. And then we can give it a nice little trim in any of the areas that the glue might have leaked out. I always like to test my patterns um, before I stuff them to make sure that there are no weak points and that the stuffing can't escape anywhere. Keep in mind while stuffing these, they are not intended to be extremely full. We're just adding a little bit of stuffing to make them have a soft, plump form, but they should not be really firm. And then we're going to go ahead and seal that off with a little bit of glue. And we're going to set that aside to dry. Then we're going to repeat this process for the arms. And seal those off as well. 
if you would like to do this craft with a child or maybe somebody who's just not super crafty, you could also skip the stuffing portion of this tutorial and just glue all the pieces flat together. And now it's time to attach the gill plate. First, we have to decide which side of the doll we like the best. I'm going to go with this side. And we're going to stick the neck of the doll up through the opening of the gill plate, making sure that this half moon shape is facing upward. And then we're going to apply a little bit of adhesive across that half moon shape. And once it gets tacky, you're going to gently press just the very edge of the opening of that fabric into the edge of the adhesive, just the edge. And then softly and carefully roll the fabric up and it'll create the illusion of a tucked up gill. And once you're confident that it's in place, go ahead and give it some nice tight squeezes to really set the look. It should look something like this. Now it's time to attach the back portion of the gill plate. Starting at the center, I'm going to go ahead and work a bead all the way down and around and to the base of the neck, leaving an opening so that we can add stuffing later. And then give it some pinchies and some crimpies around the edge to really make sure everything is nice and secured into place and held together. While that's drying, we're going to work on the cap. Starting with the top of the cap, we are going to run a thin line of glue all the way around the exterior and interior perimeter. Another little bit of a glue tip is to allow it to set up for about 10 to 15 seconds. This will allow it to become tacky enough to where the adhesive doesn't want to seep out the edges when you press the two pieces together. Now we're going to go ahead and add one of the pieces of the back of the mushroom cap. And again, we're going to pinch those together to secure. And if you will be making an ornament, now is when you will add the ribbon. Go ahead and add a little bit of glue and pinch the two open ends together to create a loop. And then on one side of the ribbon, you're going to add a little bit of adhesive and press that into the remaining back panel of the mushroom cap. And just like we did with the gill plate, we're going to start at the top and go down around the base, leaving an opening at the bottom so that we will be able to go back and stuff it. And then again with the pinchies and crimpies to make sure everything holds together really nice. While that's drying, we're going to come back to the body and we are going to glue down the base of the gill plate right here, making sure to still leave a little opening in between the two gill pleat pieces so that we can add stuffing right here. And for this part, you only want to use a teeny tiny bit of stuffing, just enough to give it a little bit of fluff, but not actually make it too bulky or 3D. And then we're going to seal that off with a little bit of adhesive and it should look like this. To attach the body parts, we're going to go ahead and cover the entire back portion of the gill plate and give it some waves to help it dry and nestle it into that opening that was cut out in the front of the mushroom cap. And now it's time to stuff the cap. So we're going to go ahead and again test our seams before popping in some stuffing. And same thing with the rest of it. We don't want to overstuff this because it will cause the pattern to bulge. We just need just enough stuffing to give it some fluff. And then seal that off with glue and it should look like this. Now for the spots, we're going to actually freehand these. You could draw them on, but I honestly find that to be such a waste of time. And then you have to fight with drawn pen lines on your fabric. Mushroom spots are meant to be a little bit irregular um, and misshapen, so just wing it. You'll, you'll have more of an organic look um, and less consistency with the size and shape of your spots, so it'll be more interesting. Felt sticks to itself, so you can just kind of position those around until you're happy with the look. 
and once you are, you're going to attach them with some adhesive. Any of the overhanging pieces can just be trimmed off, trying to get as close to that seam as you possibly can. And then you're going to attach the arms with a little bead of glue, push them into place, and then hold them there for about 10 to 15 seconds until you feel it really start to grab. For the eyes, you're going to go ahead and just poke them into place. You could also paint them on, you could stitch them using French knots. I like to add a little bit of glue just to make sure that they're not going to fall out. And with that, you have completed your own magical little buddy. Feel free to experiment with these little guys. Try out different spot shapes or ways of decorating the body. Maybe with paint, puff paint, or chalk pastel to add additional shading. You could also experiment with different fabrics like linen and lace to create a more elevated look. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this tutorial. It has been so much fun crafting with you. I hope you had the best time. And if you are interested in purchasing my pattern, it is available for a digital download in my Etsy shop. My link can be found in my bio. Until next time, happy crafting!